All right. Hello, gentlemen. How's it going? Belton here. Um, back with another video. Um, today we're going to do a quick little five ways to make at least five divines in a day right now in Affliction League. Um, I've been playing the beginning of the league as I always do. And most frequently asked question I get, how can I make currency right now? What can I invest in? What's a good way to turn X amount of money into more money? Um, frankly, while well, live streaming, it's a little bit uh, cumbersome. So uh, I figured I would just give you guys a little uh, methods here, um, try to make this quick so we don't drag it out. And every one of these is something that I've been doing, uh, but something that you can replicate right now and I'll show you how to do the uh, math and stuff for yourself. So jump right into it. <clears throat> All right, so one of the things you can be doing right now is that uh, flasks are, in particular, uh, mage blood flasks are particularly um, undervalued on the market. Now you might be saying, well, you know, mage blood flasks, who's gonna bother, uh, you know, getting those right now? What's the point in that? You know, not many people have mage bloods, blah, blah, blah. First of all, people can use mage bloods um, or mage blood flasks without having a mage blood. You know, they're, they're equally as applicable. It's just, of course, they have the reduced duration, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's not like they, they don't have an effect. Uh, people, for example, that like to do boss killing that where they want a lot of burst damage, still very good. And in general mapping, uh, you can pretty much maintain them the whole time anyways. As well, there's lots of different ways to generate flask uh, charges and whatnot um, on top of that. So all we're going to do, uh, as you can see here, I can set up a trade search and I'll put this in the description um, where you can put uh, whatever uh, flask suffixes you're looking for, right? And then these are the max tier one values. Uh, you can also search by just tier ones. So for example, shock effect would be 51, 51, 15 um, on the attack speed. Uh, all res would be 37. A uh, vision and armor would be 56. And then we do a count of one, which means it just needs to have one of these. And then we're also going to do an end with increased effect of at least one. And you can see here, if we search, we've got a multitude of flasks for 5, 8, 10C. Um, you'll notice that I just purchased uh, five ones that are tier ones. Uh, but not perfect rolls, and then I got four that are perfect rolls. Uh, in totality, this cost me under 100 chaos to get nine of these. Um, now, the next thing we're going to do is just simply throw an enkindling orb on them. The enkindling orbs are super, super cheap right now. I believe they're uh, three to one chaos. Now, we're just really looking for increased effect. Um, obviously, the higher the increased effect roll, the better. And the further in the league you get, um, it, the more important it will be to have a 70% increased effect roll. Uh, but in the early phases like this, you can really just get away um often you can you can even just put on an, any increased effect roll period uh and it will sell for more like substantially more than if it didn't have that roll on there um just because sometimes people uh enter that enchantment onto their search parameters um and so that's a good way to get some more visibility oh look at there we go 70 percent increased effect this this right here is a flask that will sell for probably three divines two to three divines at some later stage in the league but it's one that i could probably quite easily put up for uh a divine divine and a half right now and sell that pretty comfortably within a day yep there we go one divine two divines see with a 70 percent roll it doesn't even exist and, and again this is something that i just bought for 25 chaos 20 chaos so uh yeah you could do that and then again if you if you put that over um on a variety of different bases uh with a variety of different uh suffixes uh you can get a very very high return now uh, is the timeline on these highly predictable? No, but the great news, if I sell one flask, it pays for literally all the other ones. Uh, as I mentioned, I paid under like 100 C for nine of these bases and I got around 15 kindling orbs, which was like 17 C. So let's say I spent, uh, let's say it's one divine, right? Uh, and we're going to have probably at a bare minimum somewhere between nine to 10 divines back on this. As long as we cover our principal relatively quickly, the rest of it can just sort of become a passive income source. Um, so I've made a decent amount of money on those. Um, and another thing that I've been doing as well, which has been quite lucrative, uh, you'll see here uh, that I've got the silver flask and it's got the mana uh, cost of reduce, or sorry, reduce mana cost of skills. Uh, this um, craft comes from uh, unveiling the Cinder Swallow urn, which you can get from um, Katarina missions. So all you got to do to get that, or sorry, from Katarina missions, from uh, June missions by killing Katarina in the, uh, uh, the Masterminds workshop. Uh, all you're going to do here, just search for uh, Cinder Swallow. And then I, I usually just do this because I find it faster. Sort by, like, click this here so it shows the newest ones first. And then when you see one that has this here of the veil, click it. And then it'll sort by that. There you go. Now you can see the cheapest one that has the unveiled modifier, 35C. So you buy that, take it to June. 
On Veil It, it'll give you three options. Uh, the best ones to pick will be uh, the 25% reduced uh, mana cost of skills. Uh, for a lot of builds, that's an absolutely necessary mod. 3% life regen. Um, you know, for things like RF, that's very, very good. And lots of builds, it's good. And you can get, also get things like rarity, stun avoidance, etc. Uh, I, I would prioritize the reduced mana, then the life regen, and then I would go for perhaps a rarity after that. Um, <clears throat> what's great is you can actually sell the Cinder Swallow Urn uh, after you ID it back for about 80% of what you paid. But what's crazy is if you take a look, uh, we're not even going to do Silver Flask. It just reduced mana cost of skills and increased effect. The cheapest flasks are 2530C. All right, do you know what it costs to put that on there? Six baubles. So you're talking about a 2C craft, and all, all you have to do then, right? That's not that, that, that has nothing to do with the base type, nor does it have anything to do with the um, enchant. All you have to do is get the increased mod, sorry, increased effect uh, modifier on there. Uh, so you can take whatever base it is, as long as it's item level 20 or higher. Um, and then just alteration it until you get increased effect. Go craft that on there, 2C craft roughly, and you have at a bare minimum 25 chaos. If you get a good enchant or a, you know, a better base type, um, you can get them for significantly higher. If you take a look here and say increased effect on a silver flask, you can see they start off at 3540. And if you put in increased effect, you can see the cheapest one is 95 chaos. And now obviously each one of those extraneous processes might seem like uh, it's so obvious why would anyone pay extra but they do um so that's another way that you can do that as well um and again rf tends to be popular early uh you'd be surprised how you know how many people will, will pay for things like that um now the next thing we're gonna uh we did we're doing and have been doing um is just getting uh cluster jewels um sometimes crafting them sometimes just sort of uh, quote unquote investing uh into um base types that i think are going to appreciate rapidly um so a couple ones of those are the uh ever popular one i've been talking about on this channel forever which is the um eight passive 10 percent attack damage um item level restricted so item level 50 to 67 cluster jewel uh i'm trying to think of which pass uh sorry i can't remember what tab i put those in cluster um i've been buying those for between one one to three c um and you can sell those at certain points of the league later on for about 1.5 to 2 div each, but they will just generally appreciate over that time uh, at a pretty steady upward uh, pace, um, pretty consistent upward pace rather. Uh, and on top of that, they are very easy to craft if you want to put feed, fuel, and marshal on there. They end up becoming uh, a couple divines each, and you can do that because they're item level restricted with a serrated fossil, just a one 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 use resonator fossil, and um, one use resonator fossil and it is a one in 54. I'm not sure if you guys can hear the uh, construction that's happening outside my building right now. It's coming through this video. If you can, I apologize. It's why I'm making this video rather than attempting to live stream this. It's actually been driving me absolutely insane. They've been there for a month and a half. So apologies about coming through the mic though. Uh, feed the fury. So boo -boo, there's the bow version. There we go. Yeah, so they're four divs each. Okay, four divs for that roll right there. And again, you can get this base type, item level 50 to 67. Um, and then just use a serrated fossil for a 1 in 54 chance to hit that. Uh, that's quite easy. Another thing I've been investing into too, um, tornado shot stuff. Holy cow, that's loud. Uh, tornado shot stuff tends to be very, very popular or just bow builds in general tend to be things that scale well into late or mid game. People will invest in those or swap over to them for their main builds. Uh, anything that has to do with bow builds, especially Tornado Shot, is typically a good investment. Uh, I've been purchasing these. You can see this is a 12 passive item level 84 bow cluster. I bought this for two and a half divines yesterday. Uh, and you can see here, six divs today. That's with the increased effect, just the base itself though. Oh, sorry, item level. Yeah, five divines. So in one day, it's doubled already. And, and those will continue to go up. Another good base type for that is the 6% mana reservation. Uh, anything that's item level 84, where people are going to be scaling attributes and stuff, is very good. But the uh, the bow ones in particular are quite strong, because not only can they scale things like um, the attributes, but um, you get 3% uh, attack speed as a suffix. So that with a 35% increased effect goes to 4% attack speed. So the jewel itself, you can get, you know... Um, 10 life which goes to with the 35 effect goes to 13 flat life 4% attack speed 16% increased damage with bows and then you can put you know 10 of any individual attribute which would be omni for most bow builds 
or chaos res or whatever you want as your final suffix. Uh, and so what you can get per point there ends up being, you know, 16% increased damage, 4% attack speed. Um, let's say 10, uh, 10 Omni. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's just incredibly point, very, very point efficient and obviously opens up further jewels. But these will just continue to go up in price. I think by the end of last league, these were like 16 or 17 divs each. Um, these are also good targets to fracture as well. If you, um, if you get, what, what I recommend doing is just doing like a reforged speed or doing a, uh, getting in, increased attack speed tier one, which is 3%, as well as the 35% increased effect. Doesn't really matter what the other two mods are. Um, and then if you use a fracturing orb, instead of just having a 50% chance to hit like the 35% increased effect, you have, uh, sorry, 25% chance, uh, you'll have a 50% chance for that fracture to hit. And typically the 3% attack speed or the 35% increased effect are of equal value. Um, and those will be worth probably 40, 50 divs, and that'll remain consistent throughout the league. Um, now, the next thing I've been doing is running memories. Um, my philosophy overall with early league tends to be look for things that I can do with as little gear as possible. So things that are like in the tier one to tier six range mapping wise, um, but try to do things that have the same currency per hour generation as if I were doing tier 16 stuff, right? And the reason for that is because obviously one would, um, one would imagine when you're doing harder content, you need to have more investment in your gear right? But if you can take all the money that you would typically invest into your gear, um, and you can invest that into quote unquote investments, but still maintain that revenue stream that you would be getting as if you were mapping with that, um, then you just allow yourself to snowball your currency in a way that somebody who is putting their money into their character to get that same performance return uh, is not going to be able to do. And that's why I really, really like running memories because memories operate outside of your atlas, right? So, um, when you run a memory, uh, it doesn't take into consideration, <clears throat> um, you know, scarabs, doesn't take into consideration your sextants, doesn't take into consideration your atlas, map bonuses, whatever it is. As well, um, a lot of the rewards you can get from memories uh, are not contingent, like they, there's no benefit to having them in higher maps. Uh, for example, Harvest Beasts, um, you can run that in a tier one white map, uh, or you can run it in a eight modded tier 16. But because the red the red beast has the item oh my god the construction the item level has no um, the item level has no bearing on the per, like what the uh, uh, function of a red beast is so uh, it will not uh, it doesn't impact it whatsoever so even even in very low levels of gear like I have equipped on my character you can be running um, these maps uh, at the same rate as somebody who was in, you know, a much higher uh, gear level, um, and you're having pretty much the same performance, but that currency that rather than having it invested in your gear, you can invest into things like this, and that snowballs, and eventually you just take that currency, buy those items that you would have a little bit later on, but now you're far better off financially speaking. Um, so a few of the memories I like to do that with, um, this one right here, Kyrax Memory of Survivor's Guilt, it makes every item that drops um, drop as a currency shard instead. That includes fracturing and mirror shards, but of course the mirror shards are incredibly rare. Fracturing shards are actually not that rare. Uh, you get like a one, like one to three of them usually per memory, um, and just on that basis alone, a fracturing shard at like the first day of the league was like thirty-five chaos, and the memory itself was like eight C. Um, and so, not to mention the fact you can get horizon shards and chaos shards and exalt shards and all those other things that'll easily cover the cost, but um, the fracturing shards can give you five to 10 X what you're putting in, uh, just by itself. Um, harvest beasts are always a good one. There's actually a direct way to calculate the profitability of these. Um, since there are nine beasts in total, um, and nine beasts drop per memory, you can just look at the price of each beast, right? And then you can subtract the price of the memory. Um, and also if you want to find out the average price of a beast, you just take the total value divided by nine. And then for each additional party member, since it's a 20% capture rate, right? Uh, you, you know that if there, um, if there are nine total beasts and they have a 20% capture rate, it means that the average party member will capture additional party member will capture 1.8 beasts per memory. Um, so you just take the average price per beast times 1.8 and you can find out what the additional value per party member is as well. And then obviously you can just do that math to find out what the rate of return is. Um, so that one is actually very direct and simple since you can actually specifically uh, calculate what the profitability is. Um, other ones that are really good that I've been doing that I just don't have on me right now. Sorry, this video is going a little longer than intended, but hopefully it's information dense. Um, there is a Kyrak memory, or sorry, not a Kyrak memory. Uh, 
I can't remember if it's Nico or whatever. It's easy enough to find it. It's the breech one. Um, and it makes it so that uh, it has a lot of breech hands. I think it might be Nico actually. It has breech hands and the breech hands have a, a chance to drop full breech stones. Uh, I was buying these for 15 chaos each. Um, and you get two breech stones on average per memory. Uh, but breach stones at the time when I was doing it, they might have even gone up in price were 50 chaos each. So it's a 15 chaos memory and you get at, like at least usually two breach stones, which are hundred C. Um, and so you get, you know, you're getting six times your money, seven times your money off the jump. Plus you can get rings and all that other stuff, uh, breach uniques. So that's a good one. Um, there's also the, uh, only Karumba, the rogue essence. I swear to God, it sounds like they're drilling my door. The rogue essence, um, one. Uh, that's an Einhar memory. Uh, you'll get like 100, 150 essences from that. Uh, er, er, early league essence crafting is very popular since people who are sort of non-sophisticates with crafting uh, will look at just buying a fractured item, throwing essences on it as kind of like the pinnacle of what they can achieve. Or at least it's very easy for most people to do. And it's, you know, relatively controlled and deterministic. So it's obviously popular. Um, you're going to be looking at like around what one chaos per screaming uh, essence like two to three chaos per shrieking and, you know, four to six chaos per deafening essence, right? Um, you can get those, um, you can get the entire memory for about 150 C, right? And you're going to get somewhere between like 100 to 150 essences, most of which will be shrieking and deafening if you go in there with um, uh, remnants of corruption. Uh, as well, you can run those on tier one white maps. As I mentioned, uh, essences obviously has no bearing what the item level is, so you don't need a high gear requirement to do that with the exception of the fact you will, you will be <coughs> having to kill, um, you know, seven, eight essence mobs, which uh, are rare mobs, which can obviously be a bit of a handful. Um, there are some other good ones that are perhaps eluding me. Uh, I won't go through an exhaustive list of what memories are very good. But again, if this idea or like the philosophy that I'm talking about resonates with you, um, where, you know, maybe you can defer improving your character a little bit off the bat, um, but you still want a map to generate a, an income stream, right? Uh, memories are a great way to do so. Uh, you can look into them. There's obviously a variety of them. Pretty much every memory is actually profitable um, because people, uh, you know, people tend to like gun it for the Atlas right away and overlook a lot of memories. Um, but again, you can do them like, with very, very low gear thresholds. If you look at my gear, I got a 1C quiver, 1C helmet, 1C amulet, 5C boots, 1C belt, 1C. Uh, I just dropped in a map, so it was free, but it's probably a 5C bow. Um, this also dropped uh, as a five link, but this is still probably only worth about four or five chaos. This was maybe two, actually this one wouldn't even be that much, three chaos. This is about two C, um, and a taming, I actually assembled this myself. This is another way you can make money, by the way, if you buy Varex, Respite, Grip, and Pass, uh, and just uh, convert them into a taming, you can usually make about five or 10 chaos just from doing that. Um, but you can see how yeah, the gear I'm wearing is probably worth collectively about 40 chaos, not including the flasks, and, um, that, uh, that has been carrying me perfectly well through all the stuff I've been doing. Um, one of the things I've been doing as well when I've been farming Harvest Beast is saving up vultures for when I eventually start mirror crafting. You can see here I've got uh, 33 of them so far. Um, and that doesn't that hasn't factored into like I haven't considered that, uh, you know, uh, when I when I talk about profit per hour, which uh, for me at this point, I'm making probably between six to ten divines an hour uh, pretty, pretty easily. Um, not including like investments, just including things like memories and, and actively pursuing um, opportunities where there's a clear um, gap in the market, um, in particular through, uh, again, memories. Um, but there are other ones that are like almost directly calculable. Um, now, the last thing I want to cover here, so this video doesn't go too long, keep it under 20 minutes. Uh, another thing to invest in, guys, um, another good way to make money. Um, I made a ton on this overnight while I slept, uh, are charms. So charms are for the new Wildwood Ascendancy. Right. This also gives you access to 20 more inventory slots. Like <clears throat> think of, of a I cannot think of a better uh, uh, a better a, a better new pass or sorry, a better new ascendancy for myself. Um, more places to trade from. Perfect. There we go. Wildwood backpack. You see it pops off on the side here. But another thing it gives you access to are three charm sockets. Charms can be incredibly strong. Um, I. I went and checked out the list here. Again, this is something I will link in the video description, but if you go on to POEDB, it has an exhaustive list of all the mods that uh, can roll, can come onto charms, and you can also see the item level requirement of them, as well as the weighting of them. So going through this, I noticed that one of the highest item level requirements, as well as one of the lowest weightings of all the potential mods, was the Deadeyes skill, skill, Skills Fire an Additional Projectile. 
And that's insane, right? Because that can just show up on a single mod on one on one charm, and you have access to three charms from one ascendancy, which means that one prefix on one charm can give you three additional projectiles just from that ascendancy, right? Like that's nuts. And then you could see that there's also suffixes. So just because knowing how popular projectile skills in particular TS stuff like that are, um, that was something that immediately caught my eye. Um, and I found one that is just incredible. So yesterday I picked this up, uh, Deadeye's um, Lupine Charm of the Deadeye. Uh, and you can see it gives plus one proj and it gives, uh, I got another tier one roll here, 51 to 100% increased Mirage Archer duration. Not only do these synergize, but it's also quite good. 64 is not the best roll, but it is the double tier one. And again, they're both for Deadeye. Um, I paid exactly 10 divines for this. And um, uh, if you take a look on the market right now, which I will show you in a second, so here is a, here's photo evidence of that. Um, me purchasing it for 10 divines. And if we look at the market, this is something I just posted on my community section of the YouTube here. If we look at the market as it is right now, oh, that doesn't show it. Uh, oh, that was a bad screenshot on my part. <laughs> Sorry. I'll show you here. And go charm. The cheapest ones are just for the additional projectile are now 21 divines, right? Uh, and then if we look for the suffixes, you can see we've got some crazy ones here. Uh, additional flash charges, elusive effect, uh, life ES and stuff on kill, banner effect, suppression, all of that. Um, but yes, just the, just the additional um, skill projectile starts at 21 divs. The reason why this caught my attention, aside from being very strong, if you search online and offline, so any, you can see that there's only 29 of them listed. Now, obviously, there's going to be quite a few of them that are equipped, but only 29 of them are listed. Um, and that's after opening weekend, right? Now, compare that to, let's say, Mirror of Calandra. There are 40, oh, there are 45 Mirrors of Calandra that are listed. So there are less charms that have plus one proj than there are Mirrors of Calandra on the trade market. Um, and I, you know, I'm not going to make any further implications there. I'm sure you can kind of get, get what I'm getting at. Um, I, I do think that the, these are, this is something that's being overlooked by a large amount of people, uh, not only in its use case, um, not only as an investment, but also um, when you consider how many people were playing this past weekend. Um, now, a lot of people probably weren't exploring the league mechanic as much, so that is you know, a, a deterring factor from what I'm saying. But... Um, I do think that these are just going to skyrocket in price uh, throughout the course of the league. And there's a multitude of other um, uh, charms that I think will do the same thing. Uh, I, I don't want to be too detailed on all of this because I could talk about investing into league uh, early on for, for hours and hours. I do want to keep this somewhat short. I know this isn't a very formal video and I really do apologize about the construction outside. If you guys can hear that through the microphone, it is driving me absolutely insane myself. Um, but yeah, there's a few ways that I've been making money early on here, guys. Um, I would say, yeah, uh, it, when it comes to the mapping memory stuff, I can pretty, pretty easily pull at a bare minimum five divs per hour, but where a lot of the real, uh, like wealth creation is coming from, um, is how you reinvest that money. So the, the, like, let's say you spend 50 chaos on a memory and you get hundred chaos back from it. You extract that value. You put 50 C back into buying another memory, and then you, re you invest that other 50 C, right? And so you have a perpetual stream where you can do things in perpetuity with respect to what you're doing in memories or whatever. Um, and then all of that other wealth that you're generating is being reinvested into things that are going to exponentially grow your um, quote unquote net worth. Uh, within a week, uh, if you follow that that sort of basic premise, you'll probably end up with uh, 20 to 30 times the overall value that you would uh, if you were to just buy gear and then run maps and then just have that stat of that static income source where your input and your output are directly correlated. Uh, anyways, guys, hopefully this helps you out. Uh, I know a lot of you've been asking what I've been up to at the league. And um, I know some of these strategies were a little bit abstract and maybe just kind of off the cuff here. Again, I didn't uh, do it too much prep into this, but uh, I thought it was probably better just to give some ideas to you guys than it was to uh, get a really polished product out there. And so if uh, if it was helpful, or if you guys have any questions or comments or uh, anything else you'd like to see, please leave a comment below um, and let me know what you thought about the video. If you guys enjoyed this, I, I can make more of them. Um, I have like a, a list of things that I, I usually just put them on MS Paint or actually I have a notepad documents on my phone. Uh, the last time I checked, I have like 420, 430 um, different uh, strategies I've cataloged over the years. So um, yeah, if you like this kind of stuff, I can certainly make more of these videos. Um, 
Anyways, I hope you have a great day, great league start. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Cheers.